It's uh, it's freezing temperatures out here right now. I'm inside this REI Passenger 2 tent. And uh, what we're doing today is we're testing whether one of these Uko candle lanterns can effectively and safely warm a tent. This is an offshoot of our article at the prepared about terracotta tea light heaters. And we came to the conclusion that you can only really do one or two candles safely at one time. And so uh, the, the theory is that one of these little uh, portable candle lanterns would be a much better option for your go bag than a terracotta pot. And uh, so right now it's about 30, well, it was about 35 degrees when I got in here. It's up to about 40 now. I've set a 10 minute timer just to see what my body heat does inside this tent. So, cause we want to remove that as a mitigating factor. And so I'm going to just sit here for a few minutes, let my body heat heat up the tent. We have the rain fly on, so we're fairly well insulated. And we're going to see what temperature we get uh, once the timer goes off. So after 10 minutes just sitting here in this tent with uh, no extra heat, the temperature has risen from 35 degrees to 45 degrees. And my watch tells me the outside temperature is 28. So that's pretty good. So just with the insulation of this tent and my own body heat, we've uh, increased the temperature above freezing which is great. It also gives us a baseline to understand what this candle lantern will do, how much heat it will add. So I'm going to light this and we're, we're gonna give it about 10 minutes and see what the temperature is after that. So I've let this burn for a little, just a little over 10 minutes and the temperature has not risen much at all. It's, uh, it's still stuck around 45 degrees. It is not, I was hoping uh, after 10 minutes it would climb to 50. Now maybe it will given enough time, but I don't think this candle's putting out enough heat. Now it does put a, a decent amount up here and uh, this chain is getting pretty warm. Uh, the top of this feels slightly warm, but it's nothing, I don't think that's dangerous. But uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just don't think this is a very great heater. Now what you could do, there's a good amount of heat coming from just right here you know, so in a desperate situation, you could maybe wrap yourself with a tarp and, and really enclose this single candle and, and maybe, you know, warm yourself up. I mean, there is a nice, pleasant heat if I just hold my hand up there. Um, but I I don't see this heating uh, uh, even a fairly small tent like this two-man tent. So I gave it another 15 minutes and the temperature still has not risen significantly. It's a little under 50 degrees in here right now, at least in terms of air temperature. My butt is still pretty cold though. So again, I, I still think, you know, insulation from the ground is gonna be a lot more important than the ambient air temperature. Now, something I might try, I mean, there is heat up here. There is heat up here. This chain has gotten pretty, ooh, this chain's getting uh, a little hot. Uh, what's probably happening, the heat's rising, is going through this mesh up here and then just out uh, through the rain fly. So I might try lowering it. My, my concern is, is fire right so i can uh you know i have this right here i could attach it to that's probably my best bet but i'm afraid it's gonna be too close to the wall of the tent um don't want that so we're trying to balance a small amount of heat versus a big amount of fire risk right here with this candle um, also this is a beeswax candle uh the the candle lantern came with a paraffin candle already i got the beeswax candles though because uh they're supposed to put off less soot uh, which seems to be true, but even still, I, I can still smell it a little bit. My throat's slightly irritated from it. Uh, it could also just be the cold air. So uh, I might I might try moving this down, see if that does anything, but uh, I am not a believer in, in this system right now. All right, I decided to try to hang the candle here just to see if uh, maybe the heat would rise, fill the tent, and... Uh, it has made a, perhaps a slight difference, uh, hard to say. It's just under, uh, the air temperature is just under 50 degrees in here right now. Now I will say this actually does uh, verify something in the SAS handbook because in the SAS handbook, uh, the author says that in an igloo of about uh, 13 and a half feet in diameter, uh, a single candle will raise the temperature by about uh, four degrees. So in here, we started around 45 and we're up to about 40, uh, 49 or so right now, just under 50 degrees. So I would say that's actually a very accurate estimate. 
Now, this could be good uh, it, in some situations. If you're out and it was just under freezing and the candle could raise the temperature to uh, just over freezing, you know, it might save uh, your face or whatever from getting a little frostbite. But I, I really don't think this is very effective. I think you're much, you'd be much better off with uh, more padding between you and the ground and warmer clothing. I, I think that would probably do a lot more for you than this candle would. So not only am I cold right now, I have to figure out how to put this candle out. I have to let it sit for a while to let all this cool down because this, this glass, this metal right here is very hot and I have a bunch of molten wax and uh, beeswax in here. So, okay, we blew it out. Oh, now now my tent's filling with smoke. Hmm. Deli <coughs> delightful. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure the, the pros outweigh the cons. Now, uh, hopefully it won't take long for this, uh, liquid wax in here to cool down, uh, with it being 28, 30 degrees outside. I don't think it'll take that long, but, um, you know, I just, I don't think this is the best prep. I really don't. Uh, I think you'd be better off with a simple, uh, LED light and much better insulation, warm clothes, uh, good sleeping pads. That's that's my takeaway from this. But this is, illustrates why it's super important to come out into your yard and field test your preps. Don't just wait until the stuff has hit the fan before you start using this stuff and trying it and actually learning what works for you and what doesn't. Um, you know, it's good to come out. If you have a tent in your go bag, come out here and practice setting it up. Uh, you know, practice, practice your fire making kit. You know, practice all the things in your bag and know how to use them and know what works and what doesn't so you can replace it before you need it. Um, so I'm really glad I did this test and uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and go to theprepared.com for all your preparedness needs.